bij je car. Welcome and prayer, Reverend Anderson. You're very welcome to Billy Parish Church and to the grave of Sergeant Robert Quigg. This afternoon, some verses of scripture. Salvation belongs to your God, who sits upon the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. We bow our heads in prayer. Father of mercy, your love embraces everyone and through the resurrection of your Son you call us into your wonderful light as we stand here and remember. Make us a people with one heart and one voice forever singing your praise on earth as it is in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Him. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honour and privilege to be here today for this commemorative service to remember Sergeant Robert Quigg, 
BC. Robert was born on the 12th of March 1885 and passed away on the 14th of May 1955. Robert was born in the townland of Ardahanan Bush Mills. Robert was called after his father and his mother's name was Matilda. Robert had two brothers, Alexander and John. The latter died in infancy. Robert had four sisters, Isabella, Eliza, Francis and Matilda. As a young man, Robert attended the Gents Causeway <coughs> National School. And on leaving, he sought employment on a farm. He found that employment on the McNaughton estate. His boss would later become his platoon commander. Robert had a variety of interests. He played in a local flute band. He was a member of Erd LOL 1195 and the William Johnston Memorial Royal Black Institution. As the Ulster crisis deepened, with Home Rule Bill being forced through by the Liberal government, rather than have Dublin rule, the UVF was formed to defend and, if necessary, take up arms. The UVF was formed into nine divisions based on the nine counties, which were then divided into battalions, companies and platoons. Robert joined the UVF and became a commander in E Company Bush Mills. It had three sections and Bush Mills and one in Erd. The second battalion, UVF, were based in Ballamoney under the command of Colonel Hugh Lyle DSO. The outbreak of war changed the focus for the now well armed UVF. <coughs> Edward Carson offered the UVF to Lord Kitchener, who at first refused. Carson demanded that the 36th Division have the Ulster prefix. Robert enlisted in the 12th Battalion, the Royal Irish Central Antrim Volunteers, with the rank of Rifleman. His service number was 128645. His platoon commander was Harry McNaughton. <coughs> On the 1st of July, the 12th Battalion made their way down a trench system called Jacob's Ladder close to the village of Hamel. The 12th Battalion came under heavy fire as soon as they climbed out of the ravine, now the Ankara Cemetery. The majority of the former platoons were cut down. Three attempts were made to secure the ground, but to no avail. The 9th Royal Irish Fusiliers on their right were met with enfilade fire and by 9.30, they were jumping back into their trenches. It was reported that Robert's platoon commander was missing in no man's land. He went out seven times under heavy machine gun fire, and each time he came back with a wounded man. For this supreme act of bravery, on the 9th of September, 1916, Robert was awarded the Victoria Cross. Harry McNaughton sadly was never found and is remembered with honour on the Thiepful Memorial. Robert was presented with the Victoria Cross on the 8th of January 1917 at York College, Sangreham. It is said that when the King presented Robert with his medal, he said, you're a very brave man, Quig. And Robert replied in his North Antrim accent, you're a brave man yourself, King. Lady McNaughton presented Robert with a gold pocket watch in recognition of his attempts to find 
her son. <coughs> the Russians presented Robert with the Medal of Order of St. George, fourth class. Robert's service continued after the war as a training instructor, and he served in Russia along with what were called the White Russians, opposed to the revolution. Robert left the army in 1926 due to an injury. He was in a soldier's home when he fell out the window, falling 50 feet, missing the railings below, most likely to him being a sleepwalker. Prior to this, he lived on the Shankill Road in Ermney Street. Another VC winner, Bernard McQuirt from Donna Clooney, also lived there. He served with the Derbyshire Regiment and died on the 5th of October 19, wrong, 1888. Robert returned to North Antrim and died on the 14th of May 1955 and was laid to rest at this very spot in Billy Parish Church. He was buried with full military honours, lest we forget. Home, Mr. Richard Baxter. <coughs> A Bushmills hero, Sergeant Robert Quigg, BC. Known for its fisky of worldwide fame, Bushmills was home of a famous man, Robert Quigg was his name. Robert joined the Royal Irish Rifles, known as the mid Undrum Volunteers. Like many of his comrades, Quigg did not fear. He fought for Ulster and her sons, them Ulster Volunteers. Along with many of his friends, on the first day of July, Robert displayed courage that would never die. The Somme it was a battle where many brave men fell, described by many that fought as the battlefield of hell. It was on the field of battle where some men went insane. Robert Craig displayed his courage, earning a fece to his name. This is the highest honour awarded to the brave. With no thought for his own safety, seven men lives this hero saved. Under a hail of bullets, on a target of sniper fire, Quigg showed no thought for his own life. This man would not retire. For several hours, he carried on crawling through the dead, searching for his commanding officer and finding wounding men instead. He brought them all to safety from out of no man's land. Until weakness overcame him, he was not fit to stand. One more time, he did go out, crawling close to German wire, waiting every second German guns would fire. He placed a wounded soldier on an oilskin sheet and dragged him back to safety, pulling at his feet. Bush Mills is proud of Robert Quigg, an Ulster volunteer, a man who proved in battle that he knew no fear. Awarded the highest honour by the British Crown <coughs> for having saved the lives of seven men who were lying on the ground. It was soon to be 100 years since that battle of the Somme. That claimed the lives of Ulster men, a battle that went wrong. Men like Quig are hard to find who stirred <coughs> death in the eye and showed his English overlords he was not afraid to die. He lies asleep in a hero's grave, a tombstone bears his name. In a county under graveyard, Billy is its name. A man who risked his life, <coughs> his comrades for to save, is named on the roll of honour as the bravest of the brave. Bushmills must remember that hero of the Somme, who was prepared to give his life as it, as he crept along. <coughs> Not once, but seven times did he succeed, bringing in the wounded man he never asked her creed. 
Kells water flip on? They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
section, Reverend Anderson. The Lord Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary, carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So to all whom we remember, and have long since been commended to your nearer presence, in this sacred place, O God, we ask for your blessing. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you, and abide with you, and this whole church, in time, and throughout eternity. Amen. Kelswater Flute Band, the National Anthem.